The goal of an order policy is to minimize costs while serving a given demand. So what does this mean in practice? Let's consider the case of a drugstore and let's think about how to manage the order policy of this particular drugstore. Consider a single item in the drugstore and a continuous review setting in which the inventory levels of the item are continuously monitored. Your goal is to serve D units of annual demand for the item in the most cost efficient way possible. In order to do this, you must come up with an order policy that identifies the optimal amount to order each time an order is placed and the timing of the orders. To come up with your order policy, you need to understand the costs you would incur in managing inventory. We distinguish two types of costs, fixed order costs and holding costs. Fixed order cost refers to the fixed cost incurred in placing orders. This cost is incurred no matter how much you order. Think of the man hours involved in placing the orders, managing the orders, tracking the orders, and any fixed shipping costs. We denote the fixed order cost by S dollars per order. Holding cost, on the other hand, refers to the cost incurred in holding a unit of inventory for a year. Holding cost includes the cost of capital because of the dollars tied in inventory, costs of real estate, insurance, handling, etc. We denote the holding cost by H per unit per year. The third type of cost one incurs is the purchase cost or unit cost incurred in purchasing or producing a unit of inventory. Since our goal is to serve D units of annual demand and assuming that each unit costs C dollars per unit, the total purchase cost we would incur annually is C times D. The total purchase cost is independent of the order policy and does not impact the order policy unless we consider bulk discounts. For simplicity, we ignore any bulk discounts, discounts for full truckloads, etc., because of which we can safely ignore unit purchase costs as far as order policy is concerned. Given this, your goal is to optimally trade off fixed order costs and the holding cost. For simplicity, we also assume that the lead time, the time between placing an order and receiving the shipment is zero. In order to understand how the order policy impacts fixed order costs and holding costs, let's consider how you would manage the inventory of a particular brand of shampoo. Let's say each unit of shampoo costs $20 and suppose the annual demand for the shampoo is 50,000 units. Thinking about this, two natural but extreme policies come to mind. In the first extreme policy, you can order all the 50,000 units of shampoo at the beginning of the year and sell them over the course of the year as the demand arrives. This would involve investing $1 million at the beginning of the year. If we assume that demand arrives uniformly over the course of the year, you would incur huge holding costs due to the cost of capital of the $1 million investment. But on the other hand, you would incur fixed costs only once. The second extreme policy you could consider is to order a unit of shampoo whenever a unit of demand arrives. This is feasible in theory under our assumption that the lead time is zero, but of course is not feasible in practice. In this policy, you would have a negligible capital investment or holding cost, but you would incur a fixed order cost every time you order a unit of inventory. Assuming that demand arrives one unit at a time, you would incur fixed order costs to the tune of 50,000 units times S, where S is the order cost. It is clear from the extreme policies that the optimal policy is a happy medium where you balance the fixed order cost and holding cost by placing orders at fairly regular intervals and ordering a reasonable amount each time. To arrive at the optimal policy, suppose you order a quantity of Q each time you place an order. Since the order you place arrives instantaneously, you only order when the inventory hits zero. Assuming the demand arrives uniformly, it is useful to visualize the inventory on a graph. 
On the horizontal axis, we have time, and on the vertical axis, we have the inventory on hand. Suppose at time zero, you start with Q units of uh, the item in your inventory. You burn through the inventory at a uniform rate as demand arrives until it hits zero, at which point you place an order of Q units again to bring the inventory back up to Q. And this continues indefinitely. In this context, we can now compute the fixed order costs and holding costs. Over the course of the year, you would have to serve D units of demand. Since your order Q units at each time, you will place D over Q orders during the course of the year. Each time you place an order, you incur a cost of S. Hence, the total order cost that you would incur during the course of the year is equal to D over Q times S, which is nothing but the number of orders placed during the course of the year times the fixed order cost every time you place the order. Similarly, you incur holding cost on every unit of inventory you hold. In order to compute the average annual holding cost, we need to determine the average level of inventory. In order to compute that, consider the first triangle on the graph we looked at earlier. The inventory level during the time period T is falling from Q units to zero units. Hence, in order to compute the average inventory level, we take the area under the triangle and divide it by T. The area under the triangle is simply Q times T over two. Dividing the area by T, we get the average level of inventory as Q over two. We can repeat the same exercise for any length of time period. And since we just get a collection of triangles, we can conclude that the average inventory in the system is simply Q over two. Note that the above argument ignores any time period that includes only a portion of the triangle, but that is fine because we are looking at a long-term average. Using the average inventory and the formula for the annual holding cost, we get that the annual holding cost is equal to H times the average level of inventory, uh, which is Q over two. Therefore, the annual holding cost is H times Q divided by two. Having computed the annual fixed order cost and holding cost, we can then calculate the total inventory cost as equal to the total fixed order cost plus the total holding cost, which is equal to D over Q times S plus H times Q over two. Given the total annual inventory cost, our goal is to choose a quantity Q star that minimizes the total inventory cost. We can do this using high school calculus to get that the optimal order quantity Q star that minimizes the total inventory cost as equal to square root of two times D times S divided by H. This quantity is the optimal order quantity and is also known as the economic order quantity. The formula that you see in front of you is also known as the square root formula. In order to understand this better, it is useful to represent all the costs visually as follows. On the horizontal axis, we have the order quantity Q. On the vertical axis, we have the cost in dollars. As the order quantity increases, our average level of inventory increases linearly as H times Q over two. And hence, the holding cost increases linearly. On the other hand, the fixed order cost decreases as we have to place fewer orders. The total cost is the sum of the two and we see that there's an optimal order quantity that minimizes the total cost. So far, we have determined how much to order. Now let's consider the timing of the orders. Assuming that the lead time is zero, we order whenever the inventory level reaches zero. The inventory level at which we place our orders is called the reordered point or ROP. And when lead time is zero, the reorder point is equal to zero. In more general cases, of course, the reorder point may not be zero. Given the EOQ formula we computed above, let's walk through how you can use the EOQ model to identify the optimal amount of shampoo you should order for your drugstore using actual values.
Note again that your annual demand D is 50,000 units per year. This is the demand you want to serve. Let's assume that your fixed order cost is $50 every time you place an order, irrespective of the quantity you order. And the holding costs are 8% of the cost of the unit per unit per year. Since each unit, in this case a bottle of shampoo, cost $20, the holding cost per unit per year is simply 8% of $20, which comes out to be $1.60. Plugging these values into the EOQ formula, we now get that the optimal order quantity, or the EOQ quantity Q star, is equal to square root of 2 times 50,000, which is the annual demand, times $50, which is the order cost for every order you place, divided by dollar and sixty cents which is the holding cost per unit per year. Computing this you would get 1767.76 units. We rounded to the closest integer and then we would order 1768 units. Note that this number is significantly different from ordering all the units at the beginning of the year or ordering one unit at a time as the demand arrives.